What's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P. Joe Pizzapia, back with another video here at Fantasy Pros MLB. Subscribe today to the YouTube channel. And today's video is going to be, of course, about the risky players. Now, every single year, there's risk involved with certain players. Some players, though, have a little bit more risk than others. So I've identified 10 players here on this next list you're going to see that I think have a lot of risk. Now, some of them come with reward as well, but we've got to identify the risk. We've got to prepare for the risk and maybe take out an insurance policy or two. But before we do any of that, don't forget, if you're playing fantasy baseball this year, you should be doing it over on Fantrax. It's the most customizable fantasy platform in the industry, offering the great greatest fantasy experience for your dynasty keeper redraft and best ball league so you can go out there and create a league today or bring your league over because it's so easy to do that it doesn't matter if it's keeper dynasty or just redraft they also got best ball there too on fantrax so go check it out today sign up for free and be entered to win the fantrax game day experience where fantrax will send you and your league to an MLB game of your choice. Simply go to Fantrax.com slash Fantasy Pros and sign up today. That's Fantrax.com slash Fantasy Pros. Fantrax, the home of fantasy sports. And right now, it's back to the home of some risky players for 2024. Number 10, Carlos Rodon, starting pitcher of the New York Yankees, coming in at an ADP of 157. And that ADP has risen by about 25 points already since the beginning of draft season. Why? Because we're getting further and further removed away from when Carlos Rodon was missing time. And now that he's come in good shape to spring training, everyone is looking optimistic again. However, let's not forget all the risk that Carlos Rodon does bring. Yes, the strikeout rate is very tense. Tantalizing. He was outstanding for the Giants two years ago, but last year he threw just 64 innings and they were not good innings for the New York Yankees. A 6.85 ERA and a 1.45 whip. At his best, Carlos Rodon has showed you in 2021 and 2022 that he can be a dominant front end starting pitcher. However, this is a guy that has made just 30 starts once in his career that was in 2022. So even though you're still getting a discount and everyone's excited about the new cutter, Carlos Rodon is still especially dangerous in any head-to-head -head format because if he misses a significant chunk of time, that could really hurt your playoff chances. Sure, you might want to roll the dice when it comes to those season-long leagues and maybe you get a good 15 to 25 starts out of Rodon, but the risk is real, and right now that ADP is growing, which means he is a risky bet in 2024. Coming in at number nine on our list is a first ballot Hall of Famer, Justin Verlander, starting pitcher of the Houston Astros at an average ADP of 128. Justin Verlander is 41 years old, so I'm going to keep this real simple. At this age, there's not a lot of pitchers that can hold up, and he's already starting the year behind with a shoulder injury, so things have not gotten off to the best start already for Justin Verlander. When you consider that ADP of his as well, there's just better pivot points of guys that I think are a little bit more intriguing for 2024, guys like Michael King potentially, or Bailey Ober even, in that same draft vicinity, but Justin Verlander's name brand value continues to push his ADP up further, and I just think that's wrong, especially when you consider last year in 2023, his ERA was 322, however, his XFIP was 4.56 over those 162 innings, plus his K percentage fell to 21.5, and his walk rate jumped up to 6.7, so there's a lot of red flags here when it comes to Justin Verlander. Yeah, he's all-time great, but at the same time, I think I'm looking for other guys to fill my fantasy rotation in 2024. Number eight on our list is Josh Young, third baseman for the Texas Rangers at an ADP average of 122. I was a big fan of Josh Young coming into last season. He was basically a free player coming off of an injury riddled 2022. But there's some things when we dig a little bit deeper into Josh Young that concern me going into 2024, namely the fact that he hit just 247 against right-handed pitching and he had just a 299 OBP and a 419 slugging. Most of his work was done against left-handed pitching and that's great, but you're gonna face a lot of righties this year. Not to mention the fact, if you look at the second half numbers, I know there was an injury there, but things fell off dramatically after going with a 280, 331, 504 slash over his first 88 games. In the second half, the 34 games he did play, a 229 batting average, a 271 OBP, and a 366 slugging. That's gross. That all totaled out to a 638 OPS. 
I know it's a small sample size, but it's a bad trend of potentially the league adjusting to Josh Young and him not adjusting back. And what concerns me, there's enough decent guys out there in the third base in that soft middle of the position that I think can get away with not reaching for Josh Young. So color me concerned, not to mention the fact that he's also doing with a calf injury this spring, and those tend to linger. So right now, I might be out on Josh Young unless that ADP starts to get a little bit more friendly. Number seven on our list is another pitcher, Kodai Senga of the New York Mets at an average ADP of 101. Kodai Senga was fantastic last year. Sure, the walk rate was a little high, 77 walks in 166 innings, but I forgive you, Kodai Senga, because you gave me 202 strikeouts over those innings, along with a sub-3 ERA and a 1.22 whip. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is Kodai Senga is dealing with a capsule injury in his throwing shoulder, and right now the best case scenario is a late April, early May return, or so we think. I've seen this happen before when we're trying to gauge pitchers returning from these sort of injuries, and I hate to say this, Mets fans, because I'm one of you. Yes, I'm a loser just like you. Things don't typically go well for the New York Mets. Now, that's not analysis. That's just fact at the end of the day. And the Mets are a team that's probably not going to be much of a contender. So why are they going to push Kodai Senga when they already know they're kind of in this retooling phase where they're letting the kids play? Senga could linger on into June, potentially as a return. Or if things don't progress well, you're also concerned with, will this guy pitch it all in 2024? Everything's pointing to he will make a comeback at some point. However, it's the ADP. In the top 100, I'm sorry, I just can't get behind that for Kodai Senga. There's too much unknown and too many other pitchers in that same range, like Tanner Bybee and Joe Musgrove, that I'd much rather roll the dice on than Kodai Senga, who's going to miss at least a month, possibly two, possibly more. How is this ADP still there? I don't know. Coming in at number six on our list of risky players, Nico Horner, middle infielder of the Chicago Cubs at an average ADP of 58. Now, Nico Horner did a great job of doubling his previous career high of stolen bases 20 all the way up to 42 in 2023, and he maintained that 280 batting average along with it, and he did score 98 runs. But he also had 688 plate appearances, so a lot of his productivity was looped into volume. And yeah, volume is king, and yes, Nico Horner should probably hit the top of the order again this year for the Cubs. However, you have to ask yourself, a player that's approaching the top 50 overall, does he need to give you a little bit more power? Just nine home runs last year. Does he have to give you a little bit more in the RBI category? Just 68. I think the answer is yes to those questions. Now, I know you're going to be looking for stolen bases everywhere you can get them, but keep in mind with the new rules, stolen bases are easier to come by. So I'm looking at guys like Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Jones, and even players like Royce Lewis that I think all have bigger upside than Nico Horner. And right now, as of recording this video, are all being drafted after him. For me, it's just a little bit too expensive for Nico Horner, which makes him a risk because after all, he really is a three category player, not a five. And to be top 50, I want at least four of those categories. So I'm going to pass on Nico Horner. The cost is just too rich for my blood. Get ready to level up your fantasy baseball game like never before. Back for a third year in a row is our annual Fantasy Pros MLB Fantasy Fest, the ultimate event for baseball fanatics and fantasy enthusiasts alike. Join us live on Wednesday, March 13th from 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern for a jam-packed four-hour live stream extravaganza featuring some of the brightest minds in baseball. From expert analysis to insider tips, we've got everything you need to dominate your fantasy leagues this season. And if you want to know the secret to building a championship-winning roster, then tune in to our panel of experts as they dish out the best fantasy baseball advice on the internet. Plus, we'll be answering your burning questions live, so don't miss your chance to interact with the pros. And if you can't make it live, that's no problem. The entire event will be available for rewatch at any time on our YouTube channel so you can catch up on all the action whenever it's convenient for you. But trust us, you won't want to miss a single solitary moment. So subscribe to the Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel today and turn on those notifications so you never miss an update or an announcement. Get ready to take your fantasy baseball game to the next level with our third annual Fantasy Pros MLB Fantasy Fest. Number five on our list, and this one hurts, it's Mike Trout, outfielder for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, coming in at an average ADP of 52. Now, this one breaks my heart because Mike Trout, once upon a time, was the best asset in fantasy baseball. But time has caught up with the 32-year-old. He has just 17 steals over the last five years. The batting average has declined not one, but two years in a row. And he hasn't played more than 140 games since 2016. 
2016. That's a long time, everybody. Look, Mike Trout, when he's on the field, is still something to deal with for opposing pitchers. But I am really concerned about what this Angels lineup looks like now that Shohei Otani is not around there anymore to protect Mike Trout. So you minus Otani, you minus all these games, and I'm looking at Mike Trout as an asset that is incredibly risky still, despite the fact that he's going at an ADP around the top 50 overall. And I understand the name value makes you want to put him on your roster, but there might be better investments in 2024 than Mike Trout. It pains me to say it, but it's probably true. Number four on our list is straight from Hollywood, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, starting pitcher of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And my goodness, the hype train has really derailed here when it comes to Yamamoto. I love this player. I'm excited about him. I was just more excited when I could draft him in the sixth round when draft season began. Because now, now it's going to cost you a third round pick considering his ADP is averaging at somewhere around 37. 37 for a guy who's never thrown a pitch in the big leagues. Yes, I know he's been dominant in Japan. But at the same time, I think we have to ask ourselves, should we be putting a player where you have questions about the size of Yamamoto, questions about possibly the durability over his first major league season, all ahead of pitchers like Aaron Nola that have been doing it for years. And I understand why you're excited. He's a Dodger. The Dodgers are unbeatable, except in the games they lose. Yamamoto is going to be an exciting pitcher. My only trouble is, can I take him over guys like Pablo Lopez or even guys like Tyler Glass now who have enormous strikeout potential if they can stay healthy so Yamamoto is a player I love I don't hate the player I hate the ADP I just think it's a little too risky for me and if he gets off to a great start I would recommend kicking the trade tires and seeing what you can get for him because you never know what a second half adjustment could mean for Yamamoto and the rest of the league number three on our list Ellie De La Cruz shortstop third baseman of the Cincinnati Reds at an average ADP of 34 I absolutely love this player. He is super fun to watch. And he was basically the unofficial mascot of leading off last year in 2023. But let's keep it real. Ellie De La Cruz did struggle at times to make good contact. And he did strike out a little too much as well. That strikeout rate was very high, even though he is just a young player and we can get past all that. It could take some time for that to actually start to develop at the big league level. I know De La Cruz dominated and I get it. The upside is a 30 home run guy with 50 stolen bases or even more. And the Cincinnati Reds are a young up and coming team that's ready to break out in 2024. But Ellie De La Cruz still has question marks, and that's the only thing. If he's going to hurt my batting average or in points leagues, drag all that productivity down because that strikeout rate is giving me negative points, well, that's something I have to consider because he's going ahead of Luis Robert, Michael Harris, and Adley Rutschman, some players that are very safe and sound, and I know we want to draft for upside, but at the 34th player overall, that is a risk you have to be willing to take. And I'm still trying to decide myself if I'm ready to take it. I probably will because I love Ellie De La Cruz, but you have to make sure you back it up with some stability and floor in the rest of that roster just in case things don't work out the way we hope. Number two on our list, Zach Gallon. Now, I'm not going to belabor this too much because I've already talked about Zach Gallon in other videos, but the ADP is still hovering at 33 and he had 243 innings last year. That's 243, 60 more than the previous high for Zach Gallon. I'm just concerned that that's going to catch up to him. Why? Because every time we see a guy go well over his career high in innings, somewhere north of 50, it doesn't tend to work out the following season. So everything broke right for the Diamondbacks last year and for Zach Gallon. I love the player. I'm just concerned about the workload. That's enough for me to pass on him, especially with so many other top starting pitchers still on the board around that same top 50 ADP. And lastly on our list, the big dog, Aaron Judge at ADP of nine overall, outfielder for the New York Yankees. Now, Aaron Judge is a great player, but as a first rounder, he is risky. He's already come out publicly and said that that toe injury that he suffered last year is going to be something that he's going to have constant maintenance on for the, quote, rest of his career, end quote. That doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy. He played 106 games last year and he did hit 37 homers. So in season long Roto, I get still drafting Aaron Judge with a first round pick. 
But when you're in the first round, you have options, my friends, and options that might play more games than Aaron Judge, who has missed time before in previous seasons. It's only recently in 21 and 22, back to back, where he played more than 148 games, because before that, in 2018 and 19, he was missing significant time. Aaron Judge is a great player, but when you have a board full of great players in the top 10 to choose from, like Shohei Otani or Jose Ramirez or Matt Olson or even his teammate Juan Soto, I think I'd rather have all of those guys to start my team with than actually Aaron Judge in 2024, just because I have to split hairs, and we all know I don't have many of those to split anymore, so I'm going to be very careful with my first overall pick and try my best to take all of the question marks out of the equation, and Aaron Judge's injuries and the toe is just one too many hairs for me to split at the end of the day, so I'll take Tatis, I'll take Soto, I'll take Otani, I'll take all those guys before judge with a top 10 pick there you have it everybody those are the names that i think are just a bit risky in 2024 but i want to hear from you drop your comments below in the youtube channel don't forget to like this video share and subscribe who are you drafting regardless of the fact that they're risky who do you want to run away from because you think the risk is just too much I want to hear from you, so let's keep the chatter going, let's keep the talk going, and let's not forget to also go run as many mock drafts as you possibly can over on Draft Wizard today. That'll do it for me, Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.